When I rise to in support of my amendment that would cut funding for the student financial assistance account by $9.25 billion. The federal government's subsidization of higher education costs for individuals has actually created perverse incentives for higher education institutions to raise prices for all students and prospective students. This is a spiral and, and cycle that has been going on for decades. The federal government should not have a place in the monetary affairs of its private citizens. That is a matter for private banks, colleges, and students, I reserve. It was already unconscionable that House Republicans would eliminate federal work study for 660,000 students and eliminate the supplemental education opportunity grants for another 1.7 million students nationwide. It was already cruel when House Republicans offered no relief to rising college costs by freezing the maximum Pell Grant for the first time in 12 years. But if this amendment passes, House Republicans will go one step further by cutting the maximum Pell Grant or kicking students out of the program. This is truly a new low. I rise in strong opposition to this amendment. Make no mistake. This amendment will result in fewer students receiving Pell Grants and will cut the maximum Pell Grant award for 6.4 million students who use federal student aid to pay to get a college education. A cut of $9.25 billion will leave the program with a shortfall of $875 million in 2024. Under special scoring rules for the Pell Grant program passed by Congress nearly two decades ago, Congress cannot provide less funding than required under current estimates by the Congressional Budget Office. This cuts a Pell Grant to every single Pell recipient. If this amendment passes, the Pell Grant program would have less funding than required to sustain the current maximum award and existing eligibility parameters. Faced with this reality, House Republicans will have two choices. Cut the Pell Grant maximum award or kick students out of the Pell Grant program. At a time when students and families are struggling to cover rising college costs, does anyone in this chamber remember Senator Claiborne Pell? I remember him. Claiborne Pell was from Rhode Island to the manor born, affluent, but he had a vision. He understood that the sons and daughters of working men and women, of middle class families, of vulnerable families, had a right to an education just as every rich person in this country does. And therefore, he created this program, the Pell Grant Program. If my colleagues on the other side are the aisle, pass this amendment, then in fact, they are on that road that I have said over and over and over again is eliminating public education in the United States of America, eliminating opportunity for people to succeed in this country. Why would you want a legacy or a legend that follows you with that kind of effort. The United States is a land of opportunity. It should be, particularly where it comes to education for our children. It is the way to the future. I urge my colleagues to vote no on this misguided amendment, and I reserve the balance of my time. The Student Aid Administration provides funding for the government to administer student financial assistance programs, including funding for the office responsible for ensuring accountability for higher education institutions who receive federal dollars. Unfortunately, under this administration, this regime, the Department of Education has developed a pattern of attacking large higher education institutions that have a religious affiliation I will give you two of these today. The Department of Education has repeatedly gone after Grand Canyon University, the largest private Christian university in the country. The Department of Education levied a $37.7 million fine. This is the largest fine in the department's history. GCU was a nonprofit from its inception in 1949 until 2004, when they partnered with private investors in order to avoid closing. By not acknowledging GCU's nonprofit status, the Department of Education is able to target GCU as a, quote, bad actor due to the disproportionate number of Americans who attend those schools and the default on federal student loans, close quote. What, one, one more amendment on the road to eliminating public education in the United States of America. I rise in strong opposition to this amendment. 
I'm shocked by this amendment's intent to eliminate all funding to the Department of Education's Office of Federal Student Aid. What will this mean for the 17.5 million students who need to fill out a free application for federal student aid, the FAFSA? What will this mean for the 6.4 million students who rely on Pell Grants to pay for college? What will this mean for nearly 43 million individuals, one in six adult Americans, who are working to repay their federal student loans? Make no mistake, this amendment signals an intent to destroy post-secondary education in this country. The House Republican Labor HHS education bill already follows through on the other side's intent to break and dismantle public and post-secondary education for American students and families. This amendment just takes that destruction to another level. I urge my colleagues to vote no on this amendment, and I reserve the balance of my time.